Thank you very much, Joe. And you just saw Rockat taking down the Super Hot crew once again in a game that uh, finished very fast. Uh, let's take it back to the beginning and guys, maybe Nif first about the picks and bans. Some significant changes coming in there for the Super Hot crew. Yeah, no more Alistair. Instead, we get a Maokai to see. And it kind of showed why he's really strong, why he's contested. Like, he's not that strong in lane, but then once the team fight starts, he's just unkillable and makes the whole team unkillable too. And he has a lot of da damage for tanks. Yeah, I also have to highlight, we see Zed pulled out. We did see the Kale once again in the top lane. Small changes in 4.13. Super Hot crew went with a, with a very aggressive comp, Rengar in the jungle, and two sort of assassin bursty champions in top and mid. It feels like it's a comp from a few patches ago, and while it started well, it didn't necessarily work entirely the way Super Hot crew were looking for. Yeah, because when uh, we saw Super Hot crew was rambling up those kills in the early game doing very well, but they didn't seem to get any objectives going, what did you make of that play? No, I mean, the one thing that surprised me is for the Super crew, they got a head in kills, but they were down two dragons to one. Uh, it was Rocket that got the first tower. Despite finding the kills, it never led to objectives. It just felt like Super crew had this pick comp and they were like, we can kill that guy. But that was as far as the plan went. Yeah, I can just agree. They played a pick comp, but they couldn't really transist in global gold, so they fall behind eventually. And Rocket was just looking for a teamfight, so they crew up after every uh, for every dragon after the first one, which they had to give up. And the uh, support crew couldn't cont contest it, so they have to give up all the global gold, and then they just fall behind with the comp. Yeah, we actually have some replays that can show us the story of the game. Let's take a look at one of the replays from earlier in the game when Super Hot Crew uh, counter ganked, let's say. So I absolutely love this replay because Rocket are looking to jump on Mima and, and uh, you know, catch him out. But Mr. Rawls has actually stealthed himself up despite us seeing him on the screen. He's in ambush. Rocket on 100% uh, sure that he's there. So let's roll this clip out and look how quickly Super Hot Crew respond. Mime is instantly going to throw the intervention down on himself. And just as Yankos and Zazus are like, oh no, we've bitten off more than they can chew, they're locked in by their own cataclysm. And Super Hot Crew, uh, just pause the clip right now. Uh, Super Hot Crew, despite being five kills to one, they were down a tower, they were actually behind on gold at that stage. And that was the point that we were discussing and talking about upstairs. The Super Hot Crew was super aggressive and in your face, but it never equates to actual control. Yeah, so uh, Nif, if you would be. Rocket in that scenario, and you're down in kills, would you have the impulse to immediately go for objectives? Because normally, the other team would have warded everywhere and you wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, I think I would do it. We have to see at the farm as well. I think Cockman was really far ahead, top lane was equal, mid was kind of equal. But you know that your comp is way stronger than support crew, so you would just group for it because that's your winning condition. So that's what you have to do. And support crew has to pick you off, which they could do, but they couldn't really get something out of it. I, I also want to comment on the COG. Two games in a row, two COG more match uh, for Seliva, and he's performing very well on that champion. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Trevor, how much of that comes down to maybe vision control from the Super Hot crew? If you have that much of a kill lead, you know where you can go. The thing is, the vision is definitely a testament, but I, I feel even more so than that, it's the decision making for the Super Hot crew. They're prioritizing kills in this game uh, much more than anything else. They, they didn't really push waves. They didn't really push for objectives. They didn't try to sneak a dragon. They couldn't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rocket. In the previous game, they were being dictated to by Rocket, and they weren't able to make a play that would give them control of the game. So I just feel like as a team, they're not making the best decisions to, to maintain control of the match. Yeah, and um, when I was talking to Veggie last week, he was saying, yeah, we are working on that macro level strategy, especially our mid game, our late game, closing things out. And I, I have to say here, incredible testament to what Rockhead has been training on, apparently, because it takes something to take a couple of kills and Im immediately close things out. Yeah, they, they look really solid right now. They know how to use the TP, they know how to rotate on the map that they can use make of the TV, like the last team fight we could see it as well, that he teleported in from the bot lane and then they turned the fight around. So they played really well for their winning condition. What I also want to say is that actually, I think they all picked support crew really hard. Um, they know exactly what's really strong and they, they went for it. And support crew had no answer. I think Selfie uh, went for set because he felt like he had to carry. But it doesn't work like this in this patch anymore. It's more like a team coordination instead of a solo carry like in season three. Yeah, what composition had you had rather seen coming out of the super hot crew, Trevor? It's, it's very difficult to say, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been surprised to have seen maybe a Shivana for Mimer again. It is his most played champion by a long while. Deficia was highlighting in, in game one, I believe 16 games played, um, in contrast to anything else. We've seen some focus bans. Dr. Mundo's been taken off the table twice against the Super Hard Crew, so Mimer's not getting his comfort tanky pick. 
but I completely agree with what Niff was saying. If Super Crew go back to a team fight oriented build, something where they have a front line, they have a back line, and they can move as a unit and work as a unit, that could work in their favor. Yeah, and then a final question, of course, we were talking about it before the Super Hot Crew, they were talking about it in their video, when we get emotional, and it's one thing to lose that first game, but is it maybe a much harder thing to overcome when you've been ahead in kills in that second game, when you were deciding your own faith? I think the kills doesn't really matter for them. It's, I think it's really hard for a player to overcome it by yourself. It's really good to have someone outside that can talk to you and tell you that you should just forget it and keep going, because that's what you really should focus on. And, like, I'm not sure if they can do it. They're too down, so they have to give everything. Now, maybe they will do something risky. They're also on the blue side, so they might get Maokai, which I actually don't think so. So, but we will see. Maybe they pick the Alistair. All right, Trevor, any final thoughts for uh, maybe Rocket to close it out? Because we always concentrate on a team that has to come back, but Rocket just keep doing what they're doing. Yeah, Rocket can carry on playing the way they're playing. They've run comfortable comps for Salva. They got Cogmo first rotation in game one, Cogmo second rotation in game two. If they get Cogmo again, 3-0 in Rocket's favor. All right, well, well, we'll see. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, one of these teams takes a step closer to facing Fnatic in the semifinals. <laughs> 